is I won't stop laughing because that's the thing they won't get from me. You can oh. get my security and everything, but I don't give that away. I have to write a bestseller now, otherwise I go broke. <laughs> like oh my God, talk about pressure. <laughs> talk about pressure. Fabulous to meet you. Do, 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 do. Lana, it's fabulous to meet you. Thank you for your time today. I cannot wait to hear about your life and who you are. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here today. I'm a certificated uh, laughter yoga trainer and it helps people to open for their, for their inner laughter. Um, you know that children laugh about 400 times a day. That's what they just do. They play, they, they talk to each other if they're able to talk yet, but they laugh and laugh and laugh. And when we grow up, this turns down to about 15 times per day. So we don't laugh enough. That's for we sure. We definitely don't play and laugh enough. And um, I am actually a laughter yoga teacher as well. I haven't done it for a long time. And one of the reasons that I stopped doing it, even though I really loved it, and I'm not sure if you have this experience, is that when you say to people, let's do some laughter yoga or whatever, the fear in their eyes, you know, they, they, people are so scared of it. They're so scared of, of the freedom of just laughing at nothing, isn't it? Because that's what laughter yoga is all about, isn't it? You don't it need is. jokes yeah. or anything like that. You just laugh for the sake of laughing. I absolutely love it. And when I did the training myself for the weekend, it was the best weekend ever because you just spend the, the whole weekend laughing, don't you? It's the best thing. <laughs> people are so scared of it. Why, why do you think that is? Is that your experience as well? Um, yes, uh, sometimes, so I, I have groups where sometimes you, you can see that half of them are like, oh my God, yeah, 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 yeah. And they start laughing before you even tell them what to do because they're so excited. And then it's like, it's, it's getting like a wave, you know, one starts and then this is like raindrops or a wave or yeah, they all start laughing. And the other half, they feel uncomfortable, right? They feel a bit ashamed. What I mm, laughing? Maybe sometimes I realize that they realize I haven't done that for such a long time. How does that feel? Laughing for no reason, right? Yes, I, I think that's absolutely true. And there, there mm. is just nothing as freeing as that moment when you just let yourself go and just laugh and laugh and laugh isn't it I, I just absolutely love it and I remember from my training which I, I've never forgotten the fact that your body doesn't know the difference between real laughter or laughter that that we say you know use the word fake but it's not fake laughter it's acting out laughter and mm -hmm. if you act out laughter your body doesn't know the difference so you get all the same happy chemicals yeah. you, tell me more about that I've forgotten yeah. all of that well, it starts with smiling. That's what I tell clients, for example, um, especially when they are living alone. Because if you're living with a partner or family or kids, you tend to smile at them, right? But if you're living alone, you don't have a reason to smile at somebody. And even smiling starts the moment you do like this, it starts um, with, the, with the muscles it starts to tease your brain and say, ah, this person is happy. Maybe we like send a, a, a tiny little cocktail to support this person. And um, it starts with uh, smiling. So what I tell my clients is um, put a, like, post it on your mirror, like this one, post, post it on your mirror and, and tell yourself to laugh at yourself or smile at yourself in the morning or whenever you pass that mirror or kitchen cupboard wherever you want to fix it um, then your brain gets the information ah there's some happiness in the air and then you get the hormone thing running already this is amazing Romana and so tell me I read something um, about you and that is that you went through a time in your life where you didn't have much to smile about <laughs> Can you go a little bit into that and how your life was at that time and how it changed after that? Because you, you're a remarkable person. I, yeah, so let, let's start there. Okay, yeah. Um, I am a very 
um, I'm a person who loves very much and I, I love it. And I'm, I'm one of those easy to tease persons, right? You, you tell a real bad joke and I like burst out into laughter. That was all my life. It was like this. So I've been working for, um, after my studies, I started working for the biggest uh, broadcasting company in Austria. And there I was known as that happy person, of course. And um, after 17 years, we got a new boss. And he didn't like that very much um, if people are so happy. So I realized uh, it made him insecure. Maybe I, I don't know that person, right? But we got together um, on a not very good level um, sometimes. And after a meeting where I just told what I think is the truth, you cannot cut down salaries uh, just because um, you think that it's better for your reputation in the company, right? That's not good. So I got fired from one moment to the other after 17 years. Looking back, I think that was a funny story. But at the moment, I didn't think it was funny at all um, he didn't dare to tell me in person so I went on my uh, holiday September holiday and they wrote me a letter which never arrived because I wasn't home so no. when I got back on my first day at work everybody knew I've been fired but I didn't know <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Awful. That is it awful. was so weird. Now looking back, I always have to start laughing because it was so weird, like in a Hollywood movie. But at that moment, like I went to work, say hi, hi, hi. And one uh, colleague came up to me and, and asked, Romana, how are you doing right now? And I thought, come on, I've been to Greece for five weeks. I mean, that's not that life changing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so what? <laughs> That's hilarious. It is. In the moment, she she didn't dare to tell me, so they all were scared. I've been working for almost two hours until one person, <laughs> one brave, one brave person, brave one <laughs> said, "Do you know that you've been fired?" And I said, "No." I can't believe that. So I went to the office, you know, where they do all that um, uh, personal uh, stuff and asked. And, and this guy said, no, um, you're not fired, but your contract is running out. So <laughs> right. I said, that's the, that's the same thing. Come on. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was... Um, a shocking situation and I it took me a while to realize that part of it was because in business life it still is not good to, to be happy laughing emotional so they all want us to be very straight um don't be loud uh, get back yeah watch think before you talk, all the stuff we get taught when we are kids, right? And I'm not the person who does that, still not. So what I now realize or watch is whenever I get to, to business meetings, because now it's 10 years ago since I've been fired, right? We, in September, it's 10 oh, years. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and I, I got kind of, good success in my own company now but whenever I go somewhere with my character and my my power and my laughing at the beginning most people don't take me for serious yes because they think as a businesswoman you have to be like yeah get yourself together like yes. this so that, that was uh, one thing I had to sort out at the beginning because that was I got the message. I was devastated. Um, then I, I went crazy. I booked flights. I, I thought, oh, I'm a, I'm a time millionaire now. I booked flights to Turkey and Iceland. and went everywhere. <laughs> then I realized, okay, I'm a time millionaire, but the money's like, 
there's no money coming in anymore. So that was kind of a roller coaster situation in these days. And then I started looking for another job in the media a branch in, in Austria, which is not possible when you're 44. Yes, it's um, a very ageist industry, isn't it? It is. So after four months, I thought, no, come on, um, that turns me down. I don't want to get told every week that I'm too old, too professional, too whatever. Um, I, I now found my own company and try my best to survive. So I was then at survival mode. But still, there were dark times, really dark times. But still, I never um, lost my laughing. Wow. So when, when people met me, they said, you are still laughing. What are you laughing about? It is, it is, it is fabulous to meet you. Um, I ran out of money at all. So there was um, two months left money to pay my apartment. I was really, yeah, down to zero. But I said, okay, I, I, I won't stop laughing because that's the thing they won't get from me. You can oh. get my security and everything, but I don't give that away. That's what I got to keep. And so... Um, that made me stronger. After all, I have to admit it made me stronger and made me, got me into that person I'm now. It needed this really rock bottom experience, um, a, a crisis experience, of course. It took me two more years to get back on my feet again. So I was, when I now think back, sometimes I cannot imagine um, I didn't buy a single piece of clothing for two years. I couldn't go for a coffee or a piece of cake somewhere, which Austrians love to do. <laughs> that wasn't possible. And uh, nevertheless, um, I had enough to laugh. Laugh about myself, about my the way I tried to get back on my feet and... Um, yeah, then I started writing my first book and thought, okay, um, I have to write a bestseller now, otherwise I go broke. <laughs> like oh my God, talk about pressure. Talk about pressure. pressure. Wow. And then I started laughing about myself for being so, so under pressure, right? Like in the David Bowie song. <laughs> <laughs> and so you wrote your first book. What was that about? Is it a novel? Or no, that was a garden book um, for people who don't have a garden and don't have any money. So it was my topic. <laughs> and I'm a hobby gardener since the age of four. My grandma told me everything about gardening. So I put a lot of grandma's um, hot tips into that book. And the funny thing was then um, I realized I've written a lot in my life, journaling, and I wrote for newspapers, and um, I did online journalism and everything, but I never have written a book. So I sat there and thought, how do you do that? <laughs> so where do you get started? So I booked an online course, and that was for four weeks, and got the structural stuff. And this guy was gorgeous. This course doesn't exist anymore, which is a pity. But he helped us to prepare emails for the publishers. Wow. You have to use a certain language, right, to write to them. And I got a publisher within two months. I mean, that's incredible. Did you write it it before you wrote the book? Or was the book already written then? Um, I started, uh, because I took all the pictures myself as well, I started gardening, taking the pictures, writing the first chapters, like this guy told us in the course, and then wrote to the publisher. So I have a wonderful idea. That's how it's going to look like. Uh, what do I offer you? I have here the first two chapters. I take the pictures all myself. Here they are, the first ones. If you like it, uh, get in touch with me. And then two of them responded, and I could choose which one I take. That's so it book. is. <laughs> and, and in your in your midlife, in your what were yeah. you then? Forties. Yeah, that I was forty, 
forty six then, yeah. Never too old, hey. This is the message. No, no, that oh, is it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Amazing. And then, yeah, that publisher was. Um, I choose uh, the right one, I think, for me. Um, he, they were so happy with me that I got um, two more book contracts at this publisher. So I, I did. The, the garden book was finished in 2015. Uh, in the meantime, I was working on the next two ones. They got published in 2016. What then were they I, about? Uh, they were about printing, like printing on, on, on T-shirts and stuff like that. So handicraft thing. And um, coloring your, your fabrics with plants. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So yeah, and, and echo printing dyes. and that. So that I did with uh, two experts, ladies who told me all the knowledge and I wrote it down and took the pictures. Wow. And after that, I uh, wrote again with another lady a book about co-working, the co-working movement in Austria, which was pretty new in these days. And um, another one about mental training. And then I thought, now it's time to get back to my own stuff, right? I did some co-productions. Now I want to get back to my own stuff and wrote and published my first novel in 2020. Then. And what was that like? That must have been a completely different experience to the nonfiction. Yeah, it, it was. Um, it all started with a blog because that was one thing I realized Thank you for realizing, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> After like working very hard on my company and everything in, two, in 2015, I realized, hey, now you can travel as much as you want because I don't have to go back after five weeks. There's no one who tells me, right? So I, and I can't work uh, while traveling. All I need is a computer and, and uh, internet. So then I started long-term traveling and started a very personal blog just for my family. So they knew where I am. And from this blog, I then created the novel, which is about me traveling. And I packed all those challenges you have when you're traveling alone with a very old car. So my car celebrates it. I don't know. 37th birthday this year <laughs> you have to get to know your car you have to do some small repair work by your own otherwise you get crazy so and that's what I what I packed in there and I created a person which I call the traveling blues I did many interviews with other travelers long-term travelers who are traveling on their own and they they all say um, after a few days, you start your travels, and after a few days, then all of a sudden you sit there and think, what the hell am I doing that for? I mean, I could be back home with my friends. In um, my comfort zone. <laughs> in my comfort zone, right? <laughs> and now I'm traveling all alone, and everybody looks at me and says, why is she traveling alone like this? So that's when you get the traveling blues. And in that novel, this traveling blues turns into a real person who disappears and appears whenever he wants. And he's got no manners at all. No manners at all. So he smokes in the car. He like um, drinks, always drinks my last beer. And then disappears and comes back and tells me how worthless and bad I am so wow. that's most yeah. people who read the book tell me gosh it's exactly the thing we are doing to ourselves we always tell ourselves oh, I'm not good enough I can't do that uh, uh. it's it's crazy the obstacles that we put in our own way and the stories um that we tell ourselves and obviously they come from childhood and wh who knows where they come from but there are yeah. so many stories aren't there that just can ruin our lives and and I think it's so good to be conscious of them and actually do something about it and realize that actually they're probably not going to go away you just have to manage them 
mm-hmm. and get out of your comfort zone. And I always say, um, you know, get the courage, get self-courage. Self-courage, you don't need self-confidence. Self-courage will get you further than self-confidence. So just yes. do the things anyway, regardless of what you feel about yourself, just kind of put it to the back burner, focus on the fabulous and and do amazing things, taking all those self-limiting beliefs with you. Yeah, that's the thing. And think of, okay, leaving the comfort zone isn't easy, but no one said it would be easy. No. That's what, yeah, then, then it's not easy. Okay, go anyways. <laughs> Why should it be easy? Why should yeah. life be easy? No one said <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and um, I was uh, one of my other fabulous guests early on in the season was um, a, a Norwegian uh, author, a friend of mine, Hilda, and she also does transformational travel. And she also talks about how important it is actually to do solo travel because it's a completely different experience. If I speak for myself, I've got four children and a husband. So the six of us schlep a lot around the world wherever we go. There's a lot of us. It's a completely different experience to just being you. Mm-hmm. And the odd amount of times that I've done it where I've gone on a business trip or whatever on my own. It is an amazing experience. And just the fact that you know that you are the only one that can count on yourself. No one is going to help you. You have to sort out everything. You have to be awake. You have to know what you're doing, plan where you're going. It it, it really is, if you have the self-confidence to do that, or the self-courage rather, it's an incredible transformational experience, isn't it? It is, absolutely. And what I'm still very grateful for is I never wanted to have a smart smartphone. I hated them. So I got my first smartphone in 2019. I started wow. my travels without them. So I didn't get into that, um, what some people have when they're traveling alone. Okay, then they are so scared. They grab their smartphone and they do everything on it. They learn a language, chat with their friends. They they are not traveling. They are somewhere else and doing the same like back home. That's such an important point. That's such an important point. So you actually want to do away with all the sort of the luxuries that the smartphone gives you and just use it for absolute necessities. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. So when I got to 2019, of course, I, I wasn't used to that thing and I'm still not. It's, uh, it's incredible. I always, I, I, I just call with it, right? I don't use it for all the wonderful stuff people use it for. But the good thing with it is I'm still navigating with maps. Um, you have to, to get a different approach on where you're going because there is not a second person next to me who keeps the map and tells me. I have to look at the map in the morning, decide where I'm going, and then write down. I I always do that on post-its, put it on the dashboard. What is the next city? What is the next city? What is the next city? Like this. And um, I realized that Sometimes uh, things go wrong, but always for the good, I end up somewhere I didn't want it to go. That happens a lot. (laughs) I love that idea that you don't actually know where you will end up. Yeah. And and sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes in the middle of it, I just think, okay, the the next five post-its I do tomorrow because here it's nice. I just stay here. Whereas if you are traveling with that um, lady talking to you uh, next, right, next, <laughs> left, right, you don't have the chance to even think about, could I stop here? Because you'll never get, where am I? Anyways, where am I? She just tells you next roundabout, second exit. So I'm glad that I didn't have the chance at the beginning. I would have taken it and worked a lot with that. Uh, a smartphone but um, I, I didn't have one and I didn't have a the possibility to create an internet hotspot and just stay with myself I had to go into a store in every country I went to buy a sim card internet da, da. so as you know Europe is very small and nevertheless we, we've got loads of countries over here and you like you drive for two hours and there's the next border 
So I had to do that all the time and get in contact with people and find out how does the whole thing work here. Yeah. I'm so grateful I didn't have the smartphone then. Nowadays, that it makes it easier, for example, for internet hotspots or stuff like that. But uh, I'm, I'm not, a, I never got an addict. So whenever I feel insecure, I grab the phone and oh, stare in it or something like that. Amazing yeah. what a crutch those things have become. But they yeah. also, they have their place. They are, they are. Absolutely, brief. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The difference. Yeah. So Romana, do you have any kind of tips, tips for us? Like one or two tips that you've learned? clever things around traveling that makes it easier or more fun or anything like that? Can you think of any? Yes. Um, the first is give yourself the time you need. So don't push yourself. That's uh, always when I started traveling, I tended to do it the way I did it before I was a time millionaire. So you have to go to this city and tomorrow there and there and there because you have to finish the trip. You just have two weeks or whatever. So cool down, take your time. And that helped me a lot. For example, one day I ended up in, in Italy in a small city called Assisi where Holy Francesco used to live. And it was wonderful there. I, I stayed at the campground and... I thought I've been there for four nights. So when I got and wanted to check out, this guy told me, yeah, 12 nights. And I said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't get it. So give yourself the time to just lose control of time. Mm -hmm. This is such a present. It's wonderful. And then you are allowed to be present, be there. Don't think about what, tomorrow, when, why. So that is one tip. And the other is be open-minded when it comes to meeting other people. And with open-minded, I mean um, when you're traveling alone as a woman, of course, you have to be careful. So don't run into every second person and tell them all your life story. That's not what I mean. So be careful with yourself, but when, when the time is ready, be open-minded and listen to the stories of people. Um, especially what I like so much is listening to old people, what they tell. Old people are the best kept secret in the world, I think, because they are often so ignored and forgotten about, but they are so interesting if you just take the time to sit and listen to them and just explore through their memories everything that they've experienced. I agree with you so much. That's yeah. It is. And since I have a, a little dog, she's sitting next to me, um, she started traveling with me in 2017. And since then, I realized that so many old people come up to me because they, want, they like the tiny dogs. And they have the time to listen to me in my, what I call broken French or broken Italian. I, I, of course, I don't speak every European language fluently, <laughs> um, but they take the time and listen. And I never ever learned so much about a language than trying to talk with those old ladies about my dog. Again, it's, they having tell me, it's having yeah. the same courage to get it wrong and to make a fool of yourself and say the wrong word and yeah. you, you get by don't you use your hands and somehow you you make yourself understood but I think so yeah. few people are actually prepared to make fools of themselves the same thing again with the laughter it's, it's just mm -hmm. we're so in control of everything and and we, if we could just let go and just relax more yeah. into what life has got to offer I think that's a lesson for all of us it is and laugh about yourself I think that's so important. I once went uh, to a bar in Italy and I, I always mix up the words cold and hot in Italian. <laughs> because co caldo is, is warm, right? It's like cold, but yeah. It sounds like cold. As I ordered a warm beer there. And then the, <laughs> the barkeeper told me, are you sure? And he was so patient with me. 
And after all, we drank very cold beers together and I, I loved a lot about myself and this frees your soul, right? I it's love that. Good. Romana, tell us, so what job do you do now for yourself that's allowed you to become a time millionaire? Um, I'm a writer, professional writer and a writing trainer. So okay. what I do is I'm, I not only write my books, I'm still writing my books, just finished one of them, which is an astrological cookbook. So I put my both passions together in one book. And um, next to that, I write for big companies. So I do what um, they want for their websites, for example, good text for search engine optimization. I write newsletters, um, all that company stuff where you need a good writer for, but only for very large companies. So and you have retainer clients then, do you? Do you have some retainer clients? I have I have clients, yeah. At, at the moment, it's, it just takes four of them. I'm, I couldn't take more because I'm like writing eight hours per day and I want to keep some creative power for myself as well. And then I'm doing writing trainings and writing courses for people who want to get started with writing and and have all that obstacles I have no time I'm not good enough no one's interested in my story I haven't anything to tell that's not true that's not true someone out there is waiting for your story I love that so much. I often ask my guests is if they can just think of the, the five most fabulous things in their lives. First is my tiny dog. She's she's just amazing. It's a chihuahua, oh, yes. very, very tiny one. And uh, during the lockdown, the first one, uh, we started circus training. So what I did, I, um, I'm a clown as well. So I did some clown trainings. I dressed up and we did live circus shows for all people who were locked in back at the home because we've got a a large garden where we can do that and people loved it they were watching from um munich to sydney like all around the globe i loved it fantastic yeah so that's that's one fabulous thing and one fabulous memory and um the other one is my very old car a an Ita, in Italian policeman gave her the name La Carissima. I rebuilt it as a camper inside, small camper. I did that together with the carpenter. So we used Tyrolean wood. <laughs> and uh, it's fabulous. Oh. What else is fabulous is um, being at the sea, but not sea in the sense of Caribbean, but more the northern part. So I love being at the Atlantic and just being there. Do you have a favorite place? Your favorite place there? Finisterre um, in in France is, uh, yeah, it's the most best part, I think, to just be there. Uh, Watch the waves go and come back. and what I still think is fabulous that I, I started riding motorbike when I was 21, bought a small motorbike then, and I still have it. So this one turned 40 this year. Wow. <laughs> we are in the 100,000 kilometer, kilometer club over here. They have one. And I still, I still drive it. So this is fabulous. I love it. Do you take your motorbike when you go traveling in your camper van or is that too? Nah, no, that's not possible because I've got just a small, small Volkswagen, but uh, I have an e-bike, which I pack and then we, we use the e-bike during traveling. And what I still think is fabulous, I'm an ex-skydiver. So I, I was There's no years ending. In skydiving. No ending. <laughs> All the fabulous things that you are about. Wow. Okay, yeah. tell us about that. And, and I still love that this was part of my life. Um, I had some serious accidents with it and I had to stop. And sometimes when my body aches, I still think now it was fabulous. Don't regret. It was wonderful, great. And yeah. Sometimes you you hit earth too hard. (laughs) That that takes self-courage to skydive. 
I mean, I, I, oh, I, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. I, I take my hat off to you. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, the first jump was difficult for me because I like I was in that door of the plane and said, ah, I'm, I guess I made a mistake. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that lady who took care of the pupils. She just yelled at me. Um, and so I jumped. I got scared of her and got out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> it happens a lot when people change their mind right at the door. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I I did it um yeah for 400 times. So I had 400 jumps and stopped in uh, let me think 2000 and hmm, 9, 10, 11, around there. I guess 11 was the, the last time. Um I then thought that maybe paragliding would be something that suits good into my airborne history, but um, I'm, I'm very little talented in this. So I decided <laughs> <laughs> before something more happens okay. that I stop it. <laughs> You're being a little bit sensible, which is very good. <laughs> yes. And that's, I'm, I'm grateful for that because that's what age brings, right? Um, before 40, I think you, you are, and this is okay, sometimes very hard in your ego. So, but I want to prove it to myself and da, 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 da. and that's gone completely. I think now, hey, be fine. You still can walk. It hurts sometimes, but you, you find that don't do that anymore. <laughs> I can see why you are a very good laughter coach. I'm sure you are because your laugh is so infectious. Do you have... <laughs> A favorite um, laughter yoga exercise? For our astrological cooking book, we, de uh, we designed cocktails for each star sign. Ooh. And I love that laughter yoga cocktail uh, thing, right? You get your oh, yes. hands, like your like real shaker, shake yeah. your hands. So we've got that large um, cocktail mixing glass here. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> So um, we take a little of this. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I think that wasn't enough. I um, think we, yeah, five milliliters of this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have to shake it. <laughs> and now we have to take a look at it works we drink <laughs> it works <laughs> oh, i love that one no it's, it's so fantastic the laughter yoga exercise and yeah it's something we really should incorporate more into our lives isn't it it's just amazing yeah. especially for kids right when they are told and told stop laughing stop fooling around stop 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 why don't you establish it in school say okay let's start with five minutes of laughter and then you get back to being like this <laughs> Ramon it's been such a pleasure to get to know you a little bit better thank you so much for your time and I wish you thanks so thanks for well. having me welcome I wish you so much luck and love with your traveling and your writing and your laughing and all the other amazing things that no doubt um, you will be doing in the future so we'll definitely keep in touch and and yeah lots of love to you fabulous to meet you Doo -doo 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 -doo.